This is Scratch, a coding website made by MIT and used by over 100 million people worldwide, where you use blocks to create games. And this is CodeWisp, a coding website made by me and used by, well, 700 people, where you use text to create games. And today, I'm going to be putting CodeWisp through a series of tests to see if it's just as good as Scratch. But first, let's rewind. Over the past 11 years, I've made many games on Scratch, and have created dozens of Scratch tutorials on YouTube, ranging from making a tower defense game to Plants vs. Zombies. And throughout these years, I've analyzed every single part of the Scratch editor, and have used blocks a lot. And I mean, a lot. But I haven't only been using Scratch all this time. You see, after making Scratch games for a few years, 9th grade me wanted to try creating games with real text-based code. Now, at the time, I had two options. Option one was to use a game engine, which is specifically designed to help you make games. Option two was to create a game without a game engine, and just use code, which meant literally creating everything myself. The game loop, the rendering system, the input management, and so on. Of course, I had to choose the obvious best option, which was option two, making an entire game without a game engine. If you want to know how it went, well, I made a video on it. And as you can tell by the title, it took a really long time. This doesn't even include the additional hundreds of hours I spent watching YouTube videos to learn all of this text-based coding in the first place. Though in the end, my game turned out decently well. I mean, you've got player movement, a tile map, a battle system, and what the? But anyways, I couldn't withstand to put myself through any more torture. So later on, I decided to try out the other option, game engines. Just from the concept, it already seemed better than writing straight up code. However, there was a different problem. The game engines themselves were really complicated. A lot of them expected you to already know how coding worked, and the beginner ones either didn't use code at all or were not really for beginners. Plus, all these game engines had a ton of different tabs and windows and components, which took me months to fully understand. I felt like I was trying to solve a puzzle whenever I wanted to add something to the game. Also, I had a pretty bad laptop at the time, so I had to constantly turn it off so the game engine wouldn't overheat my laptop and blow up in my face. But after a few years, I was eventually able to publish a couple games. After going through all of this pain and suffering, I knew there had to be a better way. A way where you can make super cool games easily with text-based code. And that's when I realized, why not build out Scratch, but for actual coding? I mean, everyone loves Scratch. Your parents, your teachers, you, your dog probably loves Scratch too. And so using my knowledge of Scratch, game development, game engines, and coding, I invented Scratch 4.0, <clears throat> I mean CodeWisp. It's an actual beginner-friendly game engine that uses the most popular coding language in the world, JavaScript. It's super easy to get started because the editor layout is pretty much the same as Scratch's. You can make your first game with real code in just a few minutes. That's faster than it takes to download a game engine, and definitely faster than it took for me to create my first game with real code. And to see if I can really make a game in just a few minutes with CodeWisp, I'm gonna attempt to make one right now. Alright, let's see how long it's gonna take for me to make a Flappy Bird game, starting now. Okay, so this is the initial project. Um, I am going to create a new sprite. Thankfully, we have a bird sprite right here. So I'm gonna select that, and I'm gonna remove this first sprite. Alright, now if I just play this, the bird's just gonna go to the right. That's what this code does. But I am going to remove all of this. And when the game starts, I'm just going to set the bird's X position to maybe something like negative 200. Let's see how that is. All right, maybe a bit more to the left, so negative 240. Okay, and then I'll set the sprite's Y position to maybe, let's say 100. Okay, cool. And I think the bird is a bit too large, so I'm going to set the size to maybe something like 60. Alright, looking pretty good so far. Um, now I have to make the bird fall down because it's not moving. So I'm going to go to control, I'm going to grab a forever loop, drag it in here, and this is our forever. So now inside of here, I'm going to make the bird fall down. And to do that, I have to create a new variable which will be the bird's speed. So I'm going to create a new variable by just typing let, um, let's say, y velocity, 
equal to zero. And this is going to be the speed of which the bird is falling down. So inside of here, um, in the forever, I am going to change the bird's y by y velocity. Okay, and right now it's gonna do nothing. That's because y velocity is zero. So now I want to decrease y velocity. So the bird is falling faster and faster. So after this, I am going to do y velocity minus equals one. So this is going to decrease y velocity and the bird should now fall just like that. Cool. I might make the bird fall a bit slower. So maybe y velocity minus equals 0 0.5. All right, I think that's better. And now let's make it so that when you press space, the bird jumps. So inside of control, I'm going to grab an if, drag it over here, and check if, I'm going to go to sensing, if key pressed, space, then let's make the bird jump. So to do that, I am going to set y velocity to, let's say, something like 10. So now if you press space, the bird jumps just like so. Awesome. And now we have the bird. So that is pretty much it. Uh, now let's add the pipes. So I'm going to create a new sprite and I'm going to add the pipe sprite. And now I'm going to remove this code. And I want the pipes to first spawn from the right of the screen. So I'm going to set the pipes X to something like, let's see here. Um, this is around x360, so I'm going to do maybe x380. Alright, now it should be out of the screen. And I want the pipes to always go from the right to the left of the screen. So I'm going to go to control, grab a forever loop, and I'm going to go to motion and change x by, let's say, negative uh, 2. Now let's try it out. And now we have the pipes moving to the left. That's a bit slow, so I'll do minus equals four. Okay, that's a bit better. And now I want two pipes, right? I want a top pipe and a bottom pipe. So to do so, I'm gonna create a clone of this pipe. So I'm gonna go to clones and then drag a create clone of myself inside of here. And now what happens is that this is gonna create a lot of clones because this is in the forever loop and that's not good. Uh, so we have to add a weight. So I'm going to go to control and drag a weight somewhere inside of here. So now what happens is that the pipe is going to go to the left, create a clone of itself, and then wait for one second. But that's still not what we want, because we want the pipe clones to go to the left, and we want the original pipe sprite to be creating the clones. So instead, I'm going to remove this over here, and I'm going to go to clones and I'm going to drag a on clone start and I'm going to drag it before the forever loop. And this is important because on clone starts will have to be before the create clone in order for the clones to work. So now inside of this on clone start, I'm going to go to control and grab a forever loop. And I'm just going to go to motion and change X by negative, let's say four. And now since we're moving the clone instead of the original sprite, we have to do clone.x minus equals four. So this is going to actually move the clones. All right, so now let's try it out. If we just start here, we are going to get lots of clones spawning, which is exactly what we want. But now so far we only have the bottom pipe. We also want the top pipe. So to do so, I am going to save this clone inside of a variable. And this is a cool thing that we can do where we can do let bottom pipe equals to create clone. And once we create this clone, it's going to be equal to the bottom pipe. And we can actually directly change the bottom pipe's Y position by doing bottom pipe dot Y. And I'm going to set it to something like maybe negative 150. So now all the bottom pipes are going to spawn at Y position negative 150. And I'm going to decrease this a bit more to maybe negative 250. All right, I think that's a pretty good position for right now. And what I can do is that I can copy these two lines and right after do let top pipe 
equals to create clone. Because so this is going to create another clone and set it to the top pipe. And I'm going to set the top pipe's Y position to something like maybe positive 250. And I'm also going to rotate the top pipe by 180 degrees. So I'm going to do top pipe dot rotation equals to 180. And now if you just try it out, then we have a top and bottom pipe. Awesome. But now the top pipe is way too close to the bottom pipe. So maybe I'll set the top pipe's Y to like 425. And I think that's a pretty good distance. All right. And of course, we want the pipes to spawn at random Y positions. So let's go to math. And I'm going to remove this number here for the bottom pipe and drag this over here. And now let's do math.random between, let's say, negative 300 and positive 300. And now if we try it out, the bottom pipes are going to go to random Y positions. But it's a bit weird, so I'm going to play around with the numbers. And I think math.random from negative 380 to negative 240 is pretty good. So now the bottom pipes Y positions are random. And now I want to set the top pipe's Y position based off of the bottom pipe's Y position. So to do so, I'm going to set the top pipe's Y position to bottom pipe dot Y and maybe plus something like 400. Let's try it out. Okay, that is way too low, so maybe something like 800. That is too high, so... All right, I think bottom pipe dot Y plus 650 is pretty good. I also want to make the pipes a bit smaller, so I'm going to go to looks and drag a set size to, and I'll just set it to maybe like 80. Let's try it out. And now that looks better. But of course, I want the top pipe to be closer to the bottom pipe. Maybe 575. And that's pretty good. Now I also want to make the pipes spawn slower, so I'll maybe wait every two seconds. All right, and I think that is pretty good. Sweet. Now one thing for the bird is that I also want it to rotate when it's falling down, just to make it a bit more realistic. So I'm going to go to motion, and I'm going to drag a change rotation by block, and instead of plus equals 10, I'll do plus equals y velocity. Let's try it out. And it's rotating, but in the wrong way. So I'll do minus equals y velocity. And that looks a bit better, um, but I also want to make sure to set the sprite's rotation to zero when the game is started. And actually, instead of subtracting y velocity from sprite.rotation, I'll just set it to negative y velocity. And now it should look something like that. And now lastly, let's make the game stop once the bird hits the pipe. So inside of the pipe sprite, in the clones, I'm going to grab an if, drag it inside of the forever, and check if, let's go to sensing, is touching bird. So if the pipe clone is touching the bird, then let's go to game, and let's stop all. And let's try it out. And it's not exactly working. And that's actually because instead of sprite dot is touching, we have to do clone dot is touching because the pipe clones are showing up. So if clone dot is touching bird, then stop the game. So now it should work. And it does just like that. Sweet. And now we have a fully working flappy bird game. Like so. And let's check the time, and that's pretty good, 17 minutes for a Flappy Bird game with real code. But anyways, that's it for this video. Feel free to try it out on your own at codewisp.net, and let me know what else you want to see me add to this. But anyways, that's it for this video, see ya!